Hello YouTube world, Mac Daddy 1911A1 here with the Shade Tree Survivals. Alright ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the first drawing in uh, this new series I'm going to begin about the evolution of the 1911 as well as the way we fight. As you can see I have a cavalry soldier mounted and in the uh, photograph you can tell that the horse was at a good he was strolling along pretty damn good but the photograph was from probably the uh probably the 1920s i would imagine and uh the quality of it was very bad you cannot really get any detail from it and so i know my drawing this is it's the first time i've drawn a, a picture in quite a while so it's not the best in the world but it gives you an idea this is uh, from a, um, I guess, a training manual, and it's showing the, the soldier how to uh, ride the, the horse and aim the firearm at a enemy, and this is called thrust to the right, or thrust to right, and um, like I said, the photograph was small, and when I zoomed in to see if I could pick up any detail, it was just freaking impossible. But that's what the 1911 was designed for. Now, in, in, in the photograph, I could not see the lanyard that would have the pistol actually attached to the rider in case he were to drop it. But the safety features of the 1911 were designed with, um, with, the, with the soldier in mind. If the something happened, the horse was injured or uh, frightened or whatever, and it started to buck or to rear up or whatever, he could let go of the gun and he, with his thumb safety off. I mean, he didn't, whatever reason, he didn't snap it back on. I mean, when you were about to get chunked off on your head on rocks, you know, you want to try to grab the horn of the saddle um jerk over to your opposite direction in order to keep the uh, balance not to throw the horse off balance and you to be thrown off balance to fall off if you've ever ridden a horse that is rearing up um pawing um or bucking you will know you need all you got you need to you have your legs squeezing the horse your hands one hand on the horn the other hand on the reins or uh whatever the case may be in order to stay in the saddle otherwise you're going to fly off okay i've ridden quite a few horses in my life and you know i've i've been thrown i've been uh, uh brushed off knocked off bucked off um uh i've been kicked and i've been stomped okay i had my foot stomped on by one one time it didn't hurt my foot but it damn sure woke me the hell up I mean, it, it was painful, but as far as a uh, serious injury, I did not sustain it. Um, he has his leg out almost straight, and you can see the stirrup is way back by his heel. But it, that's to keep him from rolling over. And, of course, the, the saddle would be as tight as possible and so forth. Um, and from the shadow, I could not see whether his hand was on the horn or if he was just holding the uh the uh bridle the reins on the bridle um but yeah it came out fairly nice i mean it's the first attempt i was in there last night uh drawing a little bit with my grandson but yeah this this uh horse is definitely at a full gallop his only one of his feet his hooves and that would be the right front leg was actually on the ground the other three were off the ground as he was in motion so it was definitely he was moving and the gun the shooter you can see his head's right in line with the handgun the handgun the 1911's pointed out board uh, engaging an enemy and then they've got three or four others where he's shooting to the left and to the rear and to the front um but it was really awesome illustration but of course it had wikipedia on the the original photograph even though you know damn good and well Wikipedia found that some damn where else, but they'd probably nail me with a copyright strike if I were to try to use it. But like I said, the gun, because of the tang safety and the thumb safety and so forth, the gun was designed, if he had to let go of it in order to regain control of his mount, 
he could do so without the gun discharging into the animal and or he was shooting his leg or his foot or whatever the case may be. That's where the lanyard loop uh, that's the reason there is a lanyard loop and of course now they and if, you know I think back then uh, World War one and so forth forward um, I think all handguns for serious combat were used or uh, that, that all of them had a lanyard loop such as the Webley revolver that the British had and of course ours and so forth and nowadays you still see it in all the modern handguns that they're using for serious combat applications um, but yeah, this, you know, back then you had the O3 Springfield, that's a nine pound weapon or eight pound or whatever the heck the case may have been. It was a long, long weapon and it was not really suitable for this type of work. I don't know if they ever had a carbine version of it, but, um, back in the day before the 1911 came about, they had, of course, the, uh, lever action spring um excuse me lever action winchesters and then they had the trapdoor springfield and so forth that a cavalryman could uh reload as they were on the move without having to take one you know work a bolt or something of that nature bolt action rifle was really not a firearm for uh, mounted cavalry and uh you know and they always made carbine versions and shortened the rifle up but you know trying to shoot a 30 out six and work a bolt from a you know a cavalry it just it's not going to work but um yeah the cavalry reigned supreme until the advent of the water-cooled heavy machine gun um the mac the maxims and then of course later the brownings and all these other weapon systems that that were developed and the cavalry in World War I, at the very beginning, they had a really important role. But once the trench warfare was established, um, no, they were just sitting ducks out there for those machine guns. They'd just chew them up and spit them out. But that's what the gun was designed for. It's pre-World War I. Um, the American experience with the cavalry during the Civil War and the wars afterward uh, illustrated that uh, you really needed firepower and one that you could reload and you know that's a, one of the kickers um, about the design the original magazines had lanyard loops also so you you could eject a magazine and grab another one but man you'd be tied up in all those damn ropes trying to hang on to it but yeah the 1911 in its original specifications it was a cavalry arm as much as it was anything else and you know of course it was great infantry arm also but this is what it was designed for that's what all the safety features were for you take a freaking glock and do this crap i want to land your loop or something with that damn trigger something gets in there on that trigger and it can fire if the rider were to let go of it it's hanging from a lanyard loop it could snag on some of the gear off the uh, saddle or the soldier press that trigger with the the little uh blade in there and fire and hurt or kill the animal wound the animal wound the soldier so that was one of the great things about the tank safety that was its purpose and of course nowadays you got the series 80 operating system of the uh, colt combat unit and um of course, I think Smith & Wesson's uh, weapons have their own type of safety that is also a, a firing pin block, but uh, that's the reason it was on there. Okay, the thumb safety and the tang safety worked in conjunction, and if for some reason the rider had to let go of the gun in order to maintain his balance to prevent being thrown from the horse or to regain control of the horse, you know, he could do so and not worry about whether the gun was going to shoot the horse in the lungs or blow his damn foot off. And that was the purpose behind it. So, that'll end this video, ladies and gentlemen. But that's, that's like I said, um, we're going to do a, this video series about the evolution of the 1911 and not only it, but how we fight wars. And before you get any smart-ass comments about cavalry... The Green Berets of the United States Army, when they first went into Afghanistan, were riding horses.
okay there's some awesome photographs out there if you don't believe me and of course there's the uh there's a movie out there about the uh the first military forces on the ground u.s military forces on the ground in afghanistan after 9 11 they were united states army green berets okay they had had they'd worked with them or at least uh well, I, I would imagine they worked with the Afghan Mujahideen against the Soviets, the Russians, when they invaded. Now, I know we were the CIA was providing them with Stinger missiles to shoot down their aircraft and their helicopters. But also, they had uh, working relationships, some of these Green Berets, with the Mujahideen and certain groups. And um, they were on the ground well before any marines well before any normal uh, ordinary army divisions hit the ground the green berets were there and they were doing the deal but uh yeah um and in 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 the situation like we're facing up in virginia horseback may be a great option um you got a very uh, agile fast mobile uh, platform transportation um, and uh, they can sustain themselves as long as you can, they can find grass and so forth to eat uh, out in the wild so you know that's uh, that's a something uh, if you don't know how to ride a horse it might be a good idea for you to learn because who knows what you may need to know in the future now the one thing I can say I do not know how to do ladies and gentlemen as to uh, pack you know, use a pack mule or a pack horse, you know, you know, to take, to be able to transport large bulky items and so forth. But uh, that's the skill I want to learn myself. So, anywho, this is the very first uh, drawing in the series. U.S. Cavalry thrust to right with the 1911 45 caliber semi-automatic handgun. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. This is Mac Daddy 1911 May 1 with the Shade Tree Survivals. Y'all take care and stay tuned. We have more to come.